thank you so much for taking time to talk to me today. I really appreciate it. I assume you are very busy. <laughs> it's my pleasure. Thank you for having me. <laughs> um, yeah. So Faces, uh, screening in competition at Fantasia, uh, with its premiere this upcoming Wednesday. Um, like, what was the process of getting this movie made? Yeah, I. So I had made another horror short right before Faces. And that project had been my first project in many years, let's say, give or take five years. And I think half the battle with, especially in any any film, but particularly indie film, is kind of just like getting it going, like the momentum of bringing your team. And, you know, it's one thing to write a script, which anyone can do, but actualizing that is so difficult. Um, and so when that previous film wrapped, um, it was such a good experience and such a good crew. It was like half department heads that I'd worked with before, half new people that I loved. And basically I just really wanted to try and maintain that momentum. So while we were in post on that project, I wrote Faces and called up the producers of that movie and said, hey, get everyone back. And so um, it happened pretty quickly. I would say from the time I wrote the script, we shot maybe four months later um and uh and it was almost entirely the same crew uh yeah so it happened i mean that's that's the that's the very tactile how it came together less of the like story and all that but in terms of the movie it happened very quickly now like when because it, it came together so quickly had you already written the script or was it like literally like i'm going to no. cook the scripts yeah no i wrote the script as we were in post on the previous film and uh, when I finished it, um, I just felt like this was something special and didn't want to lose the opportunity to do it again before, you know, life gets in the way as it often does. What's really interesting about your genre shorts is that like they are creepy and they are terrifying, but like you're not leaning heavily into special effects. And right. I think that's a that's a very unique take especially for short films which always i feel like um frequently uh even even the best ones sometimes feel like they're effects reels as much as they are trying to tell us sure no i i appreciate you you bringing that up um and i think it's true and i think part of it and the reason my work might feel different if it does is because i actually don't come from horror like i'm not the guy who grew up watching every <laughs> like arguing with friends about Halloween 18 versus Jason in space or whatever right like that wasn't me and so I think a lot of these very talented horror filmmakers many of whom are friends of mine um, those that are did grow up with that background so much is whether it's homage or inspiration by these specific things and and I don't really have that background I came I came largely from doing sci-fi and other things and then kind of just fell into horror and ironically it's where I found like I identified the most like uh, when I started making horror films I was like oh this feels like what I meant to do um and I think because I didn't watch I actually didn't watch horror movies until like my early 20s and that's because I was too afraid of them um so I feel like maybe I'm just really in tune with what frightens me um but I'm often not chasing anything that I saw because you know, I didn't have that background. I'm just chasing an idea. Um, and I think that's why, you know, we're a little less effects heavy, maybe. I mean, it feels like your horror shorts have this um, approach to like identity and perception mm -hmm. of who people might be, which is um, both outwardly and also inwardly terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, th th what what attracts you to like that idea of like uh, perception of identity? Absolutely. I mean, I think faces in particular is, is the heaviest I've leaned on that. Like you know, faces is all about the search for identity. But you're right. A lot of my work. Um, unintentionally i've just even in retrospect realized really i seem to have some fascination with with like you said sense of self but also external like just different versions of yourself and doubles and doppelgangers and it's not something i think i've 
thought about super intentionally going into a project. It's just something that I make a project and go, oh yeah, you could totally draw a line from this to that and, and understand who made it. Um, I don't know. I mean, I think, I mean, I know what inspired me specifically for Faces, but why, I suppose I would say, because I don't know is a terrible answer. I suppose I would say, um, I think often, you know, in many great horror films, you know, it is like you're you're afraid of the monster. You're afraid of, you know, whether it's the xenomorph or Michael Myers or, or you know, whatever, um, Freddy, Jason, Chucky. It's like an outward, you know, thing that has this this embodiment of fear. And you can do that very well. And, and people still do and they find original spins on it. But I think for whatever reason, I've just been really attracted to fear of both the unknown and fear of what's inside of us. Um, and so faces in particular is all about the embodiment of that fear. And um, with the search for identity specifically, and now I'm talking more about faces, um, that was something that I think, you know, the, the search for identity is something that our society is very, you know, um, emboldened to support, you know, in a really beautiful way. But I was seeing, even in my own life, people going through that journey. And, and one thing I was witnessing was, until you get where you're going, until you get to the thing you've figured out about yourself, that you really feel like you've figured it out, there's a lot of, you know, like, stumbles along the way. And uh, we don't acknowledge that. And I was witnessing that, uh, even in people in my own life. And, but we don't talk about it. It's just kind of a pat on the back. But it was so clear to me there was something darker going on under the surface. Um, and that idea and the idea that we weren't talking about it, but that, you know, you put on a pretty face or a happy smile, but deep down you're covering up something that really scared me. And and that's that's very much what this new film is about. It's the embodiment of that fear really coming to life. Um, and the fact that it can come for anyone um, was the other thing that that frightened me. Now, uh, what has working on other people's films taught you that you've been able to apply to your own work? It's a great question. Um, so much, so much. I mean, obviously, I've had the pleasure of working on some some very large studio projects. And uh, the big lesson I've learned, honestly, um, is that what what we do on the Hollywood scale and what we do on the independent filmmaking scale, it's exactly the same. Like that was such an eye opening experience because I think people think, oh, it's so different and you make movies with millions and millions of dollars and you've got, you know, everything gets easier or you've got like uh, celebrities and giant techno cranes and all this stuff. And and it's not it's it's just as difficult um, and just as rewarding. But the problems you face on an indie project are exactly the same problems you face on a major studio film. The only difference is there's a little bit more money make them go away on the bigger <laughs> film, and not and and not even always. Sometimes there isn't, but um, but if someone makes a mistake on a permit or uh, a, you know, a locations like you have to wrap out at this time before you go into crazy overages, it's exactly the same. Um, you know, you tend to have larger crews and whatnot, but in terms of storytelling, in terms of directing, there is truly no difference. Um, it's like if you you have to be able to make a great compelling scene with uh, an actor, you know, that's up the start of their career and maybe they haven't had their big break yet. So they're not bringing in a big audience, but you have to find the talent and, and bring that, bring out that magical spark in them the same you would with Brad Pitt or Christian Bale or whoever, you know, it's not really any different. Um, you, we just come to expect, Oh, they're, they're the best. They're the best. But in terms of crafting, the scene and and finding what makes it beautiful and unique that's a discovery process on those movies just as much as the small movies uh, so anyway that the long-winded way of saying um uh i learned a lot obviously in terms of just watching great filmmakers work but i also learned that it's not that different and that was a incredibly empowering message that's wonderful so um i mean i i know you have this film 
completed and it's competing at Fantasia. Um, do you have any projects in the work that you can talk about right now or however vaguely that might be? Sure. Sure, sure. Uh, I mean, yeah, I can, and I can talk about it to a certain extent. But um, the next project is is also faces. It's um, developing the faces feature. Um, so I've made plenty of shorts, and I've written features. Um, and faces was the very first time that it was so immensely apparent to me how much more story there was in this world, and with this idea, that I felt there's no way I I'd be wrong to not explore this. Um, and so that's exactly what I'm doing. And I'm, I'm writing that and developing it right now with the hope of shooting it in the next, ideally next year. Wonderful. Well, Blake, I want to thank you so much for taking time out of your Saturday to speak to me. Um, this has been really delight and I can't wait for everybody to get a chance to, to see faces and what you've done with this genre. It's, it's, it's a lot of fun. Thank you, Nick. I really appreciate it. And thank you so much for having me. You're very welcome. Have a good rest of your day, sir. You too. Take care. Bye-bye.